Well, for a closer look at the status of U.S.-China trade relations, I'm joined by Ralph Winnie, director of the Eurasia Center's China program. He's also a partner at IPO Peng Xingpu Law Firm in Shanghai. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. So it's been something of a roller coaster when you're trying to get a gauge on China-U.S. Right. relations. Where would you say their trade ties stand at the moment? Well, I think um, it's very encouraging that China has said that they want to have a, a free and fair trade deal with the United States. Uh, remember, Trump is not a, a politician or a diplomat. He's a deal maker. That's what he ran on to become president of the United States. And he's certainly utilizing his skills as an effective businessman to bring the Chinese delegation to the table to talk about free and fair trade between the U.S. and China. That would create jobs both in China and in the U.S. Now, it's interesting because within his, his trade team, he has this mix of hardliners yeah. and, and free traders. What does that do for negotiations with China? Well, I, th I think it's tough for the Chinese to understand necessarily what President Trump wants. And having a dialogue between hardliners and people that are more engaged with China, I think is very important because it gives Trump an idea of what's on the minds of the American people. Because both Navarro represents a core constituency of hardliners, and uh, people like Mnuchin represent the more pro-business. Um, although I'm sure Navarro would disagree with me. Um, it's important to have that dialogue within the U U.S. government itself, so you can come to an agreement that's really going to benefit the American uh, worker. Now, people were wondering what was going to happen as Vice Premier Liu He um, came for these meetings, because ahead of the talks, President Trump said, when asked if this would be yeah. successful, the talks, he said, will that be successful? I tend to doubt it. The reason I doubt it is because China has become very spoiled in this trade relationship. Talk about who has been benefiting, though, on both sides when it comes to the U.S.-China trade, uh, trade relationship. Well, I think um, the, the Chinese have certainly been able to, to penetrate our market very effectively. I mean, they have very top trade negotiators that have negotiated um, very uh, strong deals on behalf of China. Trump talked about that on the campaign. And he says, he, on one hand, he respects China for that. Um, you know, uh, but now he wants to put in a trade team like Lighthizer, like Kevin Hassett, like Steve Mnuchin, that are really going to go to bat for the American worker and to, cre and to create uh, free and fair trade that's going to create jobs not only in the U.S., but also in China. And we certainly saw coming out of the Chinese embassy yeah. after Thursday's talks, there was agreement on some issues. We saw the need to maintain a stable economic relationship, cooperation on energy and manufacturing, yeah. market access for agriculture, and also strengthening intellectual property protections. How fundamental are these issues to the overall trade? I, I think it's, it is definitely fundamental. Um, for American companies going into China, the big issue has been intellectual property and, uh, and having an understanding of the Chinese business network. Uh, you know, they want a transparent and accountable system in order to be able to engage in free and fair trade. And they haven't necessarily felt like they've gotten that because of indigenous innovation and intellectual property issues. So now that the, you have the Chinese coming to the table, working with, with the U.S. government, it's a win-win for, for American uh, business. And as we saw Bloomberg reporting there that a Trump administration official said that China is offering to reduce the trade deficit to the tune of $200 billion by buying more American goods. Good. Obviously, that's a figure that Trump was pushing sure. for. If true, how much of a game changer would that be? I think it's huge. It's going to create opportunities for small, medium-sized companies to go into China, as well as multinational corporations, uh, to be able to, to sell their products in a free and fair environment. And that's really the key. And I'd like to also say about ZTE and Huawei, you want to have them in the US, OK? It's important that they engage and, and work with the American people, employ Americans, and uh, be able to create a win-win situation. Because those companies, you know, they have a huge market share. You know, they have a lot to offer. And it's important that they have the opportunity to come in you know, uh, along a, the, the lines of American companies going into China, right. where you have free and fair reciprocal trade, and both sides feel like it's a win-win uh, for, both, for both countries. And let's also look at the role of consumers, because yeah. we know that ZTE phones tend to be on the more affordable side, yeah. which, which grew them a big audience right. in the US. Talk about their role, and especially in growing the trade deficit, as a lot of people over here, if you, they look in the labels yeah. in their clothes, a lot of their things are made in China. Well, yeah, because labor costs are, are much cheaper. And 
it's become an issue where people don't want to buy American, they want to buy China because they want to, Chinese because they want to save the money. The, but you've got to create uh, jobs in the United States and in China. And I think we saw China Energy Investment Corporation agreeing to park $250 billion in the U.S., $75 billion going into West Virginia alone just to focus on shale gas development and chemical manufacturing. Need more of those opportunities. And I think what's more, very important for a Chinese company that's looking to do business in the U.S., they've got to engage in the, in the community. They've got to hire an, um, American workers. And they've got to really engage on a personal and professional level. I can tell you the mayor of Huntsville, Alabama, he came and spoke in New York um, at the National Committee for U.S.-China Relations meeting. And he talked about the positive effects of Chinese FDI when the Chinese companies came into Huntsville. The first thing they did was engage with the locals, got them on their side, and started to employ them, got involved in the community. So it was right. a win-win situation. And that's what I would encourage, not only for ZTE and Huawei, but other Chinese companies coming in here. And certainly for American companies going into China, Right, you want certainly to, a better alternative exactly. to, to a tariff standoff. Right. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much. Ralph Winnie there of the Eurasia Center China program.